What's up everybody, my name is Taylor and I'm here on behalf of Ilio to show you how to set up a wet dry rig inside of the THU plugin. Now what exactly is a wet dry rig? Well I'm glad you asked. That's what we're going to look at right now. Okay so what we're going to want to do here is just set up a normal rhythm tone and I'm going to go into the amps and I think I'm going to pick this JCM 800 and we will put this vintage UK 4x12 on it. This is what it sounds like. Let's go ahead and dial this in here a little bit. I want something definitely a little bit dirtier, grittier, a little bit more rock and roll, you know? Pretty rock and roll. Let's go over to the cabinet section here and let's just throw a 57 on this guy. Uh, let me go ahead and reduce this view here to 100 so we can see a little bit more of the rig at once. And this is going to be our dry rig. We are going to slap this SD1 pedal in front of this guy here. Sounds pretty rock and roll already. I like it a lot. So now that we have our dry rhythm tone set up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dial in a wet rhythm tone and then we're gonna blend them together. And that's essentially what a wet dry rig is. And we'll get a little bit more into the controls and what they do as we go through it, but let's just start setting it up now. So we're gonna wanna drag out this little splitter icon and put this somewhere in our signal chain. We're gonna put this after the SD1. We wanna make sure that our rhythm rig is on this line over here. So what's happening is this is our input and the signal is being split after this SD1 and one side is going into the JCM 800 with the 4x12 cabinet and the other side doesn't have anything on it yet. And then that's being summed over here into the mixer and sent out. And what we want to do right now is we want to put our wet rig on this side of the equation. So maybe for our wet rig, we want something really clean and pristine sounding. So let's go into the amplifiers here. Let's try this Tweed Deluxe. Let's maybe go with this 2x12 here. This is based off an AC30. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw our effects on this rig here. I highly encourage you to experiment with a bunch of different effects and just have fun because that's what this whole thing is about. But typically when people think of a wet dry rig, they think of delay and reverb being their main wet effects. So let's start here with some delay. And we're actually gonna use the digital delay pedal here. And I'm actually gonna turn this effect up way more than I would if I was running it in one single signal chain. We'll just max it out for the point of this demonstration. Let's go ahead and throw some reverb on here. And I'm just gonna use the reverb pedal again. I think it does the job really well. And if you're listening to that and you're thinking to yourself, man, that sounds like a mess. Of course it does. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna blend these together here. So like you can see, you can get really, really defined in here and you can add just a little tiny bit of your wet rig if you want. And it really just adds this cool effect because instead of incorporating these effects into one signal chain and then dialing in how much mix there is on each one of these effects, you could put it on a second chain and then just blend that amp into taste. And by doing it that way, you can get a ton of different tonal variation because not only are you mixing it into taste, but you're using a completely separate amp and cabinet as well. And you could really experiment with this a lot and find some rigs that really complement each other. 
Now we're gonna talk some more about the controls on the splitter and the mixer. So first of all, let's go over here to the splitter and the different crossover modes you have, you have normal and you have bandpass. So what normal does is it splits the high frequencies and the low frequencies into the two separate signals here. So if we put this on normal and we have our crossover frequency all the way up to 20 kilohertz, we're sending the full signal into the JCM 800. And then as we bring this down, we are cutting out highs. And if we drag this fader down to the bottom to signal two here, we can see that if we put it back up to 20 kilohertz, you're almost not getting any sound. And as we drag this down, we're getting more frequencies into that second signal chain. So essentially what this is doing is you're setting the crossover frequency, sending the low frequencies into the first signal chain and the high frequencies into the second one. And if you wanna switch that around, you can press this little button down here. So now we're sending the low frequencies to signal path two. And then we can use the fader to blend in the high frequencies that are being sent to signal chain one, which is going to the JCM 800. And what this frequency spread knob does is control how much frequencies are bleeding into each one of the signal chains. So if we have it set all the way up to 18, then we're not really bleeding any of the low frequencies into the high frequency path and vice versa. And then if we have it set all the way down to 0.2, then we have a lot of spillover happening. Let's just set that all the way to 18 so we don't have any spillover happening. Okay, and the second mode here is bandpass. So let's say that I wanna process the mids into one channel and then the highs and lows into the other channel. We can do that here. Probably set this somewhere around there. Maybe open up this frequency spread here a little bit. So if we only wanna send these mid frequencies down to this second signal chain, we can set it up like this and then let's just put this in the middle so you can hear that together. get some really interesting results that way as well. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this off and now let's go over here to the mixer. So the first thing you have here on the mixer is the delay. And what's cool about the delay is you can add some latency into either one of these signal paths. Now this is really nice for fattening up the sound of your tone and let's just crank this bottom one here so you can hear it. <laughs> Now the mixer is pretty self-explanatory, but let me go over some of these details here. You have the width, which controls how much stereo space each one of these signal paths will occupy. If we have it at 100, you're gonna get the full stereo field. If we have it down to zero, you're gonna hear everything in mono. And if we have it at negative 100, it's actually gonna swap the stereo field. Let me show you the difference here. Let's hear it at 100. Here's it at zero. And then here it is at negative 100. The next knobs that we have here are the pan knobs. This will pan each one of the signals left or right. So if you wanted like a hard left and a hard right pan, and this actually makes a little bit more sense in the context of two dry signals. So let's turn this delay and this reverb off so you can just hear what's going on. So 
So the pan is really, really cool, especially if you are using THU in a live scenario where you have it on a laptop and you have, you know, a power amp going to two separate cabinets and you are actually running them left and right. You can add some latency into that second cabinet and it really, really helps thicken up your tone, especially if you were the lone guitar player in your band. It's a really cool trick to make the sound fill out a lot more. Let's set these back here. And by the way, you can type into any one of these fields here just by double clicking and then typing might save you a little bit of time turning knobs. Uh, the last one, pretty self-explanatory, the level, right? So we can turn each one of these signals up or down. And then the last thing is we just have a master blend knob. So again. And what that allows us to do is blend the post sound of each one of these signals. And it's especially helpful if you're using the splitter in crossover mode, like I demonstrated earlier. Last couple little things here, we have a mono and a stereo switch. So if you want to mono sum your effects and your tone at the end of your signal, you can do it with one click. And we can set that back to stereo. And then you have phase inverters for each one of these signals right here. And if you notice that you're using some effects and you're getting some weird phase inversion issues, like things are maybe sounding a little bit thin, then you can always try to phase invert one of the lines and see if that helps you out. We're not really running into those issues right now, but it is a nice tool to have just built in, ready to go if you do encounter those issues. All right, I hope you guys have found this video helpful and informative, and if there's anything you'd like to see inside of the THU plugin, don't hesitate to let us know down in the comments below. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye guys.